Hello! Today we're going to unbox and set up the Slash 3D Resin Printer by Unizy. This was a Kickstarter that I backed in May 2016 for the super early bird price of $999. The original estimated delivery date was December 2016. Of course, being a Kickstarter, that got delayed and it didn't actually arrive to me until December of 2017, a good year late. $999 seemed like a tremendous deal for a resin printer back in May of 2016, but by the time I actually got the machine, there were other resin printers in that price range. And here's the slash in its packaging. It came with a shock watch on it. Mine hadn't turned red, so it must not have been dropped off the truck. Uh, slice it open and the first thing you find is the quick start guide and some other paperwork. My slash came with two bottles of resin, the power supply, a USB cable, a scraper, and a few other items. We'll move it up to the uh, workbench and remove the shrink wrap and take a look at the printer. It's actually a very nice looking unit compared to some of the other resin printers out there that look like black metal boxes. The only documentation that comes with the printer is a one sheet getting started quick start guide. Uh, hopefully they'll work on their documentation a bit more. Fortunately, a group of Slash users on Facebook have created an unofficial user's guide. There's a link to that in the video description. On the side of the unit came this empty container marked clean. Uh, you're supposed to fill this up with isopropyl alcohol for cleaning the unit between resin changes. On the back of the machine is where you plug in the USB, the power, and of course there's the power switch. Once you turn on the printer, you'll notice the button on the front will start glowing red. Once it turns green, you then have to activate the printer through Wi-Fi. It's kind of complicated, but there are instructions and that will guide you through that. Once you have the printer activated, you'll have to go to the Unizy website to download the software for the printer. This will be the software that will slice and send the models to the printer. To remove the build platform, you pull it straight up until it's above the vat. You turn this lever and you pull it straight forward and off it comes. To remove the resin vat, you pull this lever forward, lift up the front of the vat and pull it forward. There's also a piece of protective plastic over the LCD that should be removed. To test your printer's LCD, you go to the Unizy software and can select Show Logo. Click Yes to verify that you've removed the resin tank and the build platform, and then the logo will show up on the LCD screen. To get the build platform ready for printing, you have to set the Z height of it. To do that, you go to the software and you select Reset Z Axis Zero Position. That will bring up a dialog like that. Then you put the build platform back on, put a piece of paper over the LCD screen, and slowly lower the build platform down until it touches the paper and the LCD screen. Then you go back to the software, click OK, and your Z height should be set. You'll notice that the slash has a camera in the build chamber. This currently isn't activated in software, but in the future you'll be able to use this to monitor your prints. Now you simply reinstall the resin tank 
kind of guiding it into those two slots in the back, folding it down and locking it in with the lever. The resin fill tube and resin sensor need to be clipped into the back of the resin tank. Loading the resin is pretty easy. You just take the black cap off the resin bottle and you stick the bottle in this well here. There's a needle that punctures the bottle. And then you need to take a skewer and poke a hole in the top of the resin bottle so it vents. Then you can just put the black cap on top of the bottle again just to store it there. For my first test print I thought I'd try something easy. So I went to the Unizy store by clicking on that icon at the top. This shows you all the models currently in the store. Now to download and print a model, for example, I'm going to choose this tower piece. You click on it, you go add it to your shopping cart. You then go back to the main screen, go to the shopping cart in the upper right hand corner, select the model, and you go to the pay icon in the upper right. I'm not sure why it says submission, and then it tells you your card is empty. Go to that center icon. It should show up in the purchase models, but it doesn't immediately. You have to kind of go through and refresh it for the model to show up. Then you click the download print icon the model will download and it will start to print. The printer then begins to slowly begin filling the vat with resin. I've sped up the video because it does take a while to fill it initially. Once the print is done, you open the lid, you remove the print platform, and you try not to slobber resin all over your house. Then you remove the model from the build platform using the scraper that came with the printer. Um, this had stuck pretty well to my build platform, much better than I'd expected. Actually it took me a little while to get it off and when it came off it went flying across the room. Here's what the model looked like after it came off the build platform. Now it's time for a little post-processing. First it goes into a jar of isopropyl alcohol where it'll get stirred up and it'll soak for 10-15 minutes. After that it's removed, 
put into another jar of isopropyl alcohol where it's stirred and soaked for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then I removed it from the final soak and dried it off a little bit with a paper towel and then put it in my homemade curing chamber which is basically a paint can with some UV LEDs in it and a solar powered turntable so it rotates there and cures. I left it in there for a half hour So, how did my first print turn out? Well, actually looks pretty nice. But will future prints come out just as nice? Well, we'll have to find out. Stay tuned.